it's so easy, it's easy to mash up those diodes. How long is this going to take you guys? Not oh, forever. Can I, I can only turn the nut like one third. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to go tight, I think, now, this one. Well, we, might, we might just want to align it, maybe, check that it's... Uh, yeah, my, mine's going tight. So, is that... What a way to spend New Year's Day, just tightening up nuts. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! 2024! And we're back at the WTF with a new project. Well, an old new, an old project that's been rejuvenated. Got Ian, as usual, Paul. And uh, we're going to uh, just show you around what we've done with the TNA. Uh, you, may you may remember that a few months ago, I think it was in the beginning of the summer actually, I got this engine which I've had for quite a few years. And uh, what I wanted to do is strip it all down, build up a new frame, redo all the electronics and the control box because um, it hasn't been run for about eight years uh, so we've done all that and we've actually got the generator back on and we're going to be testing the generator um, we'll, we'll, Paul will tell us all about that because he's, he's been sort of mostly behind that and then we're going to run it um, just to see if some of the electronics for the generator works but what we'll do first is I'm going to show you what we've done on here and some of the things that um, are a bit interesting uh, regarding the engine control and everything. So um, with that we will have a closer look. Right, <coughs> one thing that we had, one problem that we did have with this is um, regarding the generator was the uh, bearings and um, Ian and Paul uh, kindly took the generator away and they've done some work with the, uh, the bearings. Paul, do you want to explain what you've done with the, and also the electronics on this? Yeah, sure, Justin. Yeah, so we've got some electronics here to uh, control the excitation winding. So we've adapted a previous circuit that we did for a 400 hertz alternator where the three transformers would sense the AC voltage and then that would be rectified and then that would go into the control circuit. So as this is a DC output alternator, it's got an internal rectifier, uh, we don't need that. So we just connect that sort of more directly into the circuit. So again, we've got our old friend, the SG3525A voltage mode PWM modulator chip and uh, that, that just drives an FET that switches the, um, the excitation winding. So we've tested it on a, uh, a motor generator rig when we had this uh, generator back at uh, our QTH. So we've done a test up to only half the speed though our motor wasn't powerful enough to spin it to the full 12,000 RPM. So we only did 6,000 RPM but we've got it running nicely regulating at 12 volts. So hopefully with this test we'll be able to uh, run it to the full speed of 12,000 RPM and get the full DC voltage off 28 volts. Brilliant. So uh, what I'm going to do is, um, I think what I'm going to do is just show you some of the electronics that we've done on this to to, to try and uh, make it a little bit better compared to what it was. Okay. So what I'm going to do is show you the um, control circuitry for this um, <clears throat> engine. So what we've got here, though it looks quite um, daunting, it's actually um, not that much. So the first thing is obviously this board here is basically a motor controller. So you've got two um, MOSFETs which are basically control controlling the speed of the uh, fuel pump uh, motors. Um, this part here is just simply a normal PWM motor controller which I've made using, uh, as Paul says, our old friend, the SG3525. Uh, but what's interesting is this little thing here. So the plan is, this is actually a Zykoi model turbine uh, ECU or FADEC and um, what I've done is I've basically adapted the output of this so that it'll run uh, this obviously much meatier uh, motor controller circuit because obviously 
with a model turbine fuel pump, the uh, <clears throat> the out, you know, the, the the pump is much smaller, but the fuel pumps on this are, are, are a lot larger. They much they require a lot more current. So uh, the so that's what I've done there. So hopefully, what we'll do is um, we can ultimately we'll be able to switch between sort of manual control, which is simple PWM motor controller with a with a pot, um, <coughs> or we can switch this switch out and then that will effectively bring in the model turbine ECU. So hopefully this engine, um, we've got, still got a few little problems to sort out, uh, will basically govern itself uh, using the model turbine ECU. Uh, that's the plan anyway. Um, at the moment, this run that we're gonna do, we're gonna do it on, we're gonna be all manual. We're not gonna try and uh, use the model turbine ECU because as, as I said, there's still a few little problems we've got to solve with the uh, thermocouples and things like that. Um, but other than that, um, the rest of it works. Um, so um, we've so shown you the fuel parts. Well, also what we've got, we've got a DC-DC converter there which is provides 12 volts for the two fuel pumps, uh, which is just Bosch 044 sort of fuel injection pumps which are used on cars. Um, and I think that's more or less it. The engine is still the same as what we did. Uh, what we had before. If you want to see what it looks like, there's some earlier videos um, that we've done. We'll quickly show you the control box before it starts to rain. The control box is essentially, you know, what we generally use for these uh, turbine engines. You know, we've got, um, <coughs> just turn it on quickly. So we've got a TGT gauge, um, the, the engine speed, and this is the uh, little data interface uh, from the um, Psychoi model turbine FADEC. Uh, so we can program the FADEC uh, for various parameters um, which can be used uh, for, for when the thing is starting up or, and, and running. So that's ultimately what we plan to do uh, with all that. Anyhow, what we're going to do now, we're going to crank it up, we're going to test that generator, so we'll see how we get on.
very, it's very wobbly, but those control loop bars are really wobbly, it overshoots the rock, and the switch is carrying down, so it needs to be these two things, unfortunately. We need to change the um, compatibility compensation components. Well, I'm back uh, inside the shack, out of the rain. It's starting to chuck it down outside. Ian and Paul have uh, headed off. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, little run. We've still got a little bit of tweaking to do on that SG3525 uh, chip uh, in order to uh, get that generator circuit uh, to, to run uh, slightly better. And hopefully next time we run it, I'll sort out the little problems we got with the ECU thermocouple uh, <clears throat> arrangement, which uh, is just uh, preventing us from running the thing up with the Sycoy ECU. So hopefully next time we run the TNA, we'll be able to it'll have it running uh, as it should so that's it happy new year and uh, don't forget to watch again cheers for now